Good morning, everyone. This is RiffCal. We're going to finish out our Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Randomizer Tutorial Edition. So one thing I realized after I made the last video... Uh, by the way, we're going into Mazidia with the Darkness Crystal, which triggers this cutscene, and will give us access to the Giant of Babel and the Moon. Uh, so yeah, one of the cut or one of the big things I realized after my last video is that I didn't actually talk about Rosa and why you would take Rosa and kind of a little bit more about the mages. So I'm going to start off while this cutscene's running and while we're doing our initial walking around here and talk about them. So Rosa is, generally speaking, the best mage alongside Fusoya. In some ways, she's actually better than Fusoya. Um, because she only uses one magic stat, she's less split on how her stats work. Fusoya, uh, his stats are actually really... Uh, you can see there, his will is significantly higher than his wisdom, which, both of which are kind of middling. Rosa uh, actually has less gear equipped than him, and still has higher will. Uh, the same goes for Callum as being technically the most powerful uh, black mage. Uh, Rosa, compared to the twins, and Rydia also has significantly better hit point growth. So that is why she is, generally speaking, the best option for uh, mages, specifically for white mages. Uh, when you have a party that consists of a bunch of physical characters, you generally want to focus on having a white mage to assist them. So traveling to the moon, first thing we're going to do is check the shop. The moon has one shop here. Uh, we're not going to get into the nuances between all the mage characters. I think I'm actually going to do a separate video talking about that. So, first of all, Soma Drops normally you don't buy. However, we have an obscene amount of money. So, I'm just going to give... Uh, each of these gives a uh, 10 hit or 10 MP. I'm just gonna give Fusoya, you know, 100 extra MP. Actually, let's get one more. Normally, you do not have the ability to do this, but we did a bunch of extra grinding. We've done some, you know, extra looting that you wouldn't normally do. We're doing everything. We have extra money. Why not? So, just in case it comes up, the middle one here is to steer the ship. The crystal takes you back and forth between Earth. Uh, the guy on the right will take you to the Tower of Babel. Or, Giant of Babel, which we're going to deal with in a moment. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is visit Cave Bakuma. There are four treasure chests here. There are no trap chests. That is a good thing. <laughs> uh, they have generally pretty good treasure, but usually by the time you get here, uh, you don't need to do loot them at all. I'm pretty sure that's where we're at, although we just got a Zeus Gauntlet, which is actually better than what we have. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and equip uh, Cecil. Actually, we're gonna leave Cecil on the protect ring for now. Let's give it just the these as he's gone then. Okay. So, if you are not sure what level you're at or how difficult this is gonna be, you can go over to this little ledge and you can see, without having to walk all the way around, what the boss is. Fortunately, this is a lunar sparkle, so we don't actually know what it is. The other thing you can do in this area right here is use sirens. And that's what we're going to do real quick to make the rest of this game go a little bit smoothly. So, these King Ryus are one of the best uh, enemies in the game for the purpose of leveling up. Uh, K 
Kane is doing very little damage because he is not back row glitched, so when he hits the one in the back, he's doing very low damage output compared to someone like Cecil there. He's kind of low damage compared to Cecil anyway, but Cecil's, like, ridiculous. You want to get this light glitch off? We probably don't actually need to do much leveling right now. Um, I'm just kind of showing it at this point. <laughs> And actually, Jabrosa just got tier 4, so she's in really good shape. She just needs hit points. Okay. So. One other thing I didn't mention yet is the key item count. You can see there up in the top right corner, it's at 6 out of 17. When the key item count gets to uh, 10, you get double XP from that point on. That's actually part of the reason we're not going to do any more grinding right now. Okay, play. Perfect. Uh, we're gonna switch this for the full moon because full moon gives you uh, extra damage against flying enemies. We're gonna do a quick check here to see if I actually have that. Uh, I don't think I've got the thing I need. Whoops. Okay, so we're gonna just use one of these coffins on Rosa. So Plague puts a countdown on your enemy, or on your allies. Um, The way that this works, we're going to basically keep killing and resurrecting Rosa. Every time we kill Rosa and resurrect her, Plague will recast the count. Basically, if any of your characters don't have count on them. Uh, the other way you could do this, if Rosa were to get a turn, we could have before count gets applied, we could have her use a, uh, uh, Star Veil. And reflect count back onto Plague. And he would just continue casting Plague, or casting Count on us over and over again. Because, yeah. So, this spot uh, was the Bahamut spot. It's one of the spots that is either kind of it's kind of a middle tier spot. Um, this is forty five thousand hit points, so not that much scarier than the other uh, summon monster bosses. Uh, it hits pretty hard. It's got pretty good stats overall, but it's not. Uh, its physical attack is very high. So, physical attacking bosses here are a problem, otherwise you're probably good. Uh, we just got the Legend Sword, which will give us an Excalibur uh, when we take it back. Uh, it also gives us the ability to complete one of our objectives now. We have both the Adamant and the Legend Sword. However, that does not give us any other key items, and we're still looking for... Uh, looking for like one other one I think the pan uh, we have not gone to Baring Castle yet either I'm not super concerned about that but I did want to mention that if we get that I think we're possibly gonna look at Tower and Baron but I'm not super concerned about it either they're both pretty straightforward locations So entering the Lunar Lair, we get one more uh, character. Uh, this should be either Rydia or a duplicate. So it's a cane. So we're just going to get rid of him. 
At this point, there's not a ton of reason to take another character. Although, if we had not done any grinding, if we still needed to get our levels up, it's good to check this character spot before you do that. Um, unless your intention is to, you know. Unless your intention with, uh... I'm not sure what my words- oh, you get key item. Unless you're not intending until after you do the grind. Getting key items before the grind. Words are hard sometimes. I've been playing- I've been playing this game for three hours today. <laughs> I apologize. Um, okay, so we're gonna head to the bottom first. Uh, there are five boss locations here that give six key items. So this is, we're generally not going to look for chests here. Usually by the time you get to this point, you should not need gear. If you do, if you need gear, or if you don't have access to sirens and you want to get some experience, you can definitely look at opening some chests, fighting some monsters in the trap chests. Just be aware, they are very hard. Make sure you, honestly, it's better to fight bosses a lot of times because you have fixed strategies against them or to get down to the save points before you start opening chests. And that's actually why we're going down all the way before we start fighting bosses. There's two bosses that we passed on, on the way, but there's a save point here. Uh, the other thing is that the previous sections um, that we just went past uh, there's less bosses there. So there's three bosses down here. This one has two treasure chests and has a very high rate of uh, experience. So actually, we can just let this run. So this is the Lunar Dragon spot. 46,000 uh, hit points. Tons of experience. Uh, This is another one of those where if Kane wasn't berserked, that would be preferable. But we're just gonna let it run. Um, so King Queen Evelyn is one of the free fights. They're on a script. They're gonna use Fire 2 twice. Uh, and then just die. Three times? That's right, it's like three Fire 2s and two Fire 1s. They are not a threat, ever. Um, and then they just go to the cutscene, they color, or uh, palette swap, and become conscious, and Kane will continue beating on them, even as they've retained their mind, apparently. And then they die. Uh, if you dispatch the king, the queen will automatically kill herself. So the next time it is her turn. 100,000 experience. There's the pan. Okay, so we're gonna save, because you always want to save. Again, based on how long it took, as much as anything. Uh, I'm actually going to equip the Defense Sword because it has 105 base attack and means that we're not accidentally going to screw things up. We're going to bump the uh, Avenger up a little higher so that we can shift it around if we need to and re-equip him. That way we have a little more control over when he goes Berserk so that we don't have that exact situation happen again. Not that there's a ton of bosses left where that's a concern, but there are a few. So, Defense Sword is very good. Okay, Rubicant is kind of an obnoxious boss. Because he's gonna cast Fire 2 on us. A lot.
Uh, also, his glare will pretty much kill anyone in one hit. So every time you do a physical attack, he counters. Uh, it's really straightforward. One of the tricks here is if you revive somebody, you need to make sure... So like in this case, I'm going to let him do his fire 2 counter, then I'm going to use a life with Rosa lined up to heal immediately afterwards. Technically, I probably should have done a cure 3 there instead of a cure 4 if I was single targeting. Saves MP and cast time. So, this is the... Let's see. This is the Plague Spot. It's only got 30, 33,000 hit points. One of the lower moon bosses. Um, it's not a super hard spot. Plague does not have great stats. And we get the Rat Tail. Uh, the Rat Tail is used along with the hook to get one of the key items back down on Earth. I think, let's see, so we've got the pan, we've got the legend sword. Um, if you were just doing a regular run of this game, this is where you stop. This is where you make sure your levels are good, and then you exit, you go back to Earth, and you level up. But I am going to go talk about the other boss spot real quick. We're going to find a couple bosses, and we're going to see if we can get the rest of the so, keep in mind, this, especially with the pass in hand, this is where you exit. Right here. <laughs> and honestly, we're already at the point where we've got our characters pretty well leveled. Like, you may go fight another Lunar boss, or, uh, you know, crack a couple more eggs, or do another couple more uh, drag uh, King Ryu's just to get Rosa over the threshold in it, around 2,000 points. So all you have to do with this spot is survive, but that is often easier said than done. I'm going to find that tier 3 that's down here, and I'm going to give it to Cecil, because he's the most survivable. So Dark Knight Cecil. You have two options. Uh, one is to kill him, the other is just to survive. If you survive three hits, you get the justice is not the only right in this world. So, generally, the best way to do that, especially in a fast location like this, is to just throw a cure three potion at your highest hit point character. Immediate. Have to get that going immediate. Sirens are in the high grit, or the pool alongside some of the other stuff that. There's. There ends up being some weird stuff in the key item pool when you're at this mode. So, that was the Ogopogo spot. Uh, Ogopogo is like the end boss, or one of the end game, like really scary bosses, obviously, in the regular version. Uh, 50,000 hit points, highest hit point spot. Um, there's a few bosses that you can fight there that are very, very challenging. Um, other thing worth mentioning. This spot right here, right in front of this cave, is the other spot where you can use sirens to summon king roots. So if you are not over in Cave Bahamut, you can summon them on that floor. I forgot to use a cabin before we started walking over here. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, cross the invisible bridge. Across the teleporters over here at the save point is where you find um, the wyvern spot. So wyvern spot is actually the highest hit point spot. 
combat. I was wrong a second ago. 60,000 hit points. Uh... And it's Vanilla Wyvern. Okay. So fighting him at his vanilla spot is actually slightly less bad because it has low magic intentionally so that you don't run into Mega Nuke killing you. At most locations, Mega Nuke just kills you. Your goal is usually to get a... to turn battle speed down and adjust your characters into a way where you can use a Star Veil. And get your characters back up. So, Bahamut has a, or Wyvern has a very straightforward script. He's going to start out by casting Mega Nuke, which wrecks your entire party. Uh, in most locations in the game, it will do 9,999 damage. His vanilla spot and a few of the very low magic spots are the only places where that is not. Uh, he is going to then cast Wall on himself and bounce nukes off that. We're just going to spam Cure Force. and attack. In the vanilla spot like this, you can do that. In most locations, uh, if it's an early game location, your goal is to get a Star Veil off before he gets a chance to act. And if you do that, he will reflect the nuke back at himself and do 10,000 damage to himself and save one of your party members. That is your best option most of the time. There's your tower key. So, as I'm walking here, I'm going to talk about the tower, because we're probably not going to go do the tower during this run. So the tower is a long climb with two bosses. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So, oh, actually, we can do exit here. I'm dumb. So the first boss there is at the very top of the tower, you fight the Luge Bono. It's a relatively late, it's a later game uh, encounter than it seems like. It's like a 15,000 hit point spot. So relatively high. And it is mediocre on the rest of its stats though. So depending on what bosses are there, not super hard. Uh, it's kind of on par with the dark, uh, the uh, dwarf castle bosses. So you go to the top of the tower, fight him, and that's uh, the one you can always. Do. You don't need all. You need is that underground access to do that one. The other one in the tower is the Dark Imp spot. It has 500 hit points. However, it requires you to then walk back out of the tower to trigger a cutscene. Okay, this is the Pale Dim spot. Pale Dim spot has 32,000 hit points. Um, we should be good here. Maybe... This spot hits pretty hard, uh, so Ashura here is kind of scary, but we should be good. Um, so the way we're going to take care of this is we're going to cast Wall on her. There are two ways to fight Ashura. The first one is to cast Wall on her, <laughs> and then just hit her a lot. Uh, the second one is a slightly more 
technical method, and it's good for early game it before you make it access to wall. I guess also worth mentioning, if you do not have the ability to cast the wall spell, you can instead cast a star veil and then use a second star veil with the same character, and it will basically just cast it twice. So there's two ways to get wall on her, either casting it or using star veils. Either way, um, that's kind of the easy way, because otherwise she'll just keep curing herself. And cure four, basically, it's really hard to keep up. The other way is to use the, uh, what is called the life lock method. So you can, whenever you hit her, she will rotate her faces and use the appropriate spell on her next action. So, the way you can lock her is by... If you wait until just after she casts Life 1... Ah, Pink Tail. Pink Tail is the other one that gets used alongside the Rat Tail. Okay, so we've got our requisite number of items now. So yeah, basically the trick with Ashura is each time when she starts casting life, you do one attack. That will cause her to counter by switching her faces, and then you wait until she starts casting life again. It's a very specific rhythm, but if you can keep it, you're good. So next thing we're going to do is go to the giant. The giant, uh, so there is a manipulatable grind for XP within the giant, there are no key items, and there is one character to can recover. If you have a, char or a character, specific character you have to recruit as a goal and you haven't found them, or if you are looking for a key item and you haven't found Mist Dragon, those are usually the two times that you have to go into the giant. The other time being, there is a very specific grind that you can manipulate the RNG for. Or, if you have certain flag sets on, you can just fight until you find it. However, it is a relatively rare fight. It is not rare enough to use sirens, unfortunately. It is probably the best uh, fight to do... There is the only fight you can really do to do a slingshot, because it is a single fight that is consistently... or that you can keep summoning more monsters to. Uh, slingshot is when you have a character, like when we have that low-level Rosa, who is significantly lower level than everybody else, and what you do is you enter one fight Right it, so it's a fight right in this area, and actually, I'm not going to sit here and grind for it. Uh, but it's a fight with an enemy called a searcher. Actually, you know what? I can't necessarily find the right searcher, but I can at least find the right or show you what it looks like. And I have run enabled, so uh, certain flag sets have run disabled. If you have a flag set with run disabled, don't do this. So searchers and beamers. Oh crap, we have a Berserking Cane. That is actually really bad for this situation, but that's okay. Because we're going to... not actually be doing it. Yeah, this is a horseman ride. So, you can see there, when he hit the searcher, it summoned a horseman. So there's an, another enemy I can summon called a D-Machine. And the trick with this grind is you set up a cycle so one person hits the de or hits the searcher immediately after that someone casts weak on the d machine immediately after that someone does an attack against 
the next and or against the D machine, which kills it, and then the next person in line does a life watch. The last person is in charge of healing. Then it goes back to us to the first person. Uh, sometimes you just kill the, that last person instead and just take them out out of the equation. Um, and then resurrect them when you're ready. And then you have the first person hit again to create a cycle. You can create an infinite number of D machines that way. Uh, typically, you need to kill like eight or nine of them. This is really not a good spot for this boss. Oh god. Okay. So, this boss has 112,000 hit points. This is the high. I've said like three times now, this is the highest hit point spot. This is the actual highest hit point spot, because it's the, uh, the four element spot. Uh, this boss uses a wave attack. So we just need to keep the water down until we get his hit points down and we're good. So the lit scared him, but he get. Uh, but because Kane attacked, we're still gonna get nuked here by that. Okay, we're gonna reset. So this is where the actual strategy aspects of this game come in, and where you really have to kind of figure out where you're at. We're going to not Berserk Kane because we have to have a, a, a very specific oops very specific rhythm to this Kainazo is a really rough fight uh, at any high hit point location because his wave attack um, His wave attack, which is a counter-attack once the water is up. Is very problematic, because it's based on his hit points. So in a spot like this, where he has very, very high hit points, you end up in a lot of trouble. See if we can get this off in time. Nope. 